Hello, my lovely viewers, and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and tonight we are streaming chapter 15 of Endless Summer Book 1. Whoops. Aha! Um, before we get started tonight, I do want to acknowledge um, the terrorist attacks over in New Zealand in Christchurch on the mosques. Uh, I've kind of been watching that unfold all day on, on Twitter and various media outlets, and I just wanted to say that that shit's not okay, and there is a long history of complicity in that, both in the United States and around the world, with the, um, the white supremacist ideologies and allowing them to spread without putting any kind of checks on them and calling it free speech when, you know, it's... It, it ends up getting people killed, and um, I do want to encourage you, if you've run across the footage, or stills from the footage, or even the manifesto anywhere on social media, do not dignify them with views or clicks on that, um, because that was the terrorists' whole point in releasing that, was to spread their propaganda. That is propaganda for them. So, if you see those images or those videos, please report them and have them taken down. Do not spread them yourself. Um, don't ignore what happened. I've seen a lot of people going, oh, well, you're saying we should ignore what happened. No, we're saying don't do the thing that they wanted us to do. So, um, and and yeah, look out, look out for your friends. If you've been affected by this, I just, I want to hope that everybody you know and love is safe. I know that's not true. For everybody so if it's not true for everybody then I hope peace can come to you soon because you deserve it you should have been safe here and yeah <laughs> with that the stinger for chapter 15 is the watchers have come for you can your friends rally together to stop them let's find out let's also find out if I remember any of the traps that I set So Act 3, Chapter 15, it was not meant to end like this. Yeah. Yeah, this is... This is a choice. Okay. And he just stares at us because he, he has nothing to say on this subject. Okay. Oh, don't do this. Kira, stay behind me! I did not practice my accents, by the way, so this is gonna be great. Jake leaps out of bed, immediately charging the intruder. No! No, you fucking run, you guys! You don't do this! You don't do this! You just run away! God. Jake charges again, wrestling the Watcher to the floor. They grapple, rolling over each other through the field of shattered window glass, until... Oh god! Sh oh, that sounds bad. Um, this would probably be the moment to inform you that uh, this is a major character death. So, just FYI. The Watcher leaps up, stunned. He looks down at his hands. The blood on them looks black in the moonlight. <gasps> Jake! You run to Jake's side as he twitches on the floor. Blood soaks into the rug. Ooh. Oh god. <gasps> no! No! <laughs> that bad, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. Where's our magic healing plant? It was... He resisted. It was not meant to end like this for him. The... Mmm... <clears throat> Victim blaming much? Okay, it's fine. It's cool. You hold Jake's hand, which is already growing cold. 
tears well in your eyes, blurring everything around you. Don't leave me, Jake. You can't leave me! We don't really know this guy. Hey, none of that now. Don't cry over a nobody like me. Oh, God, don't. <laughs> You've got your whole life ahead of you, princess. They're, they're going for it here, aren't they? God. And ain't nobody gonna take that from... The light in his eyes goes out. <laughs> Crying over fictional characters, take a drink. This changes nothing. You must come. Fuck you! You just killed one of my friends. What the actual fuck makes you think I'm gonna listen to you now? I don't care if it was an accident. You don't fucking break into somebody's room and... Yeah, no. No, no. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You react instantly, tearing at him, striking his face. There we go. Enraged, blinded by tears, you reach up and rip the glowing blue necklace from his throat. So we're yeah, we're we're just gonna rip that thing right off, I guess. Let's do it. Let's do it. As it comes off in your hand, the rage consuming you fades. And all you can think of is Jake smiling, entwined with you in bed. Okay. What can I say, princess? You've got that effect on me. Suddenly, there you are. Back in bed. You blink. <laughs> Come on, I know it's a cheesy line, but it ain't that bad. What's with the face? You sit up straight, your whole body tingling. It all feels real, as real as the blood on your hands felt. Jake? Is it really you? You pull him close to you and squeeze, tears rising once more. God damn it, take another drink. This is especially silly since I've played this before, um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Whoa, what's wrong? Somehow, you're holding the necklace of the Watcher who killed Jake. The stone, instead of a nebulous blue, is a cold, leaden gray. Hey, where'd you get that? That's gotta look especially weird since we were just like... I think, literally, when he says that, we had been fucking, like, less than ten minutes ago and hadn't left the bed, as far as I know. So, yeah. This would be especially weird to Jake, I think. It was real. You're, uh, starting to freak me out a little. Yeah, I'm starting to freak myself out a little. We can say, I just saw you die, or do you trust me? Do you trust me? Who the hell are we, Aladdin? What? <laughs> what is that? Um, I think I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna be Aladdin here. Do you trust me? Huh. <laughs> uh, I guess you could say that. I mean, I'm looking at you naked, so there's some level of trust there. Then I need you to come with me right now. You grab Jake's hand, pulling him out of bed and into the closet. 
You close yourself in, peering through the slits. <laughs> oh my god. Is this a sex thing I haven't heard of, or... Uh, I... <laughs> you hush him. There, by the window, a shadow passes over the moon. Then... Yeah, sure shit, there he is again. Cool. All right. Oh, does he? I mean, I realize they're just reusing the same art, right? But is, does he, like, still have his necklace? Like, does this now exist in two timelines, like, dead and not dead? Or is the necklace that he's got also dead? I'm going to be interested to find out. In the darkness of the closet, Jake's jaw drops. What the hell? How did you- Shut up. Shh. The Watcher stares round at the empty suite, perplexed. Things are getting weirder by the second around here. But right now, that guy's roaming the halls looking for us. We've got to warn the others. You quickly throw on clothes and leave your room. Jake pulls you against the wall and peeks around the corner. It, oh, oh, they've gotten in in more than one location, okay. Oh, I just noticed she has long hair. I thought she had, like, medium-length hair. But no, that's, that's her hair kind of over her shoulder. Oh, cool. Okay. Or no, this is... I mean, it's technically a different sprite. Okay. So there's there's two of them. I think they've basically just switched the masks on the on the sprites. Look, more of them. How are they all getting in? Well, some of them must have rappelled down the roof. Okay, how did they get on the roof in the first place, Jake? That's what I want to know. None of the trees around here are that tall. This looks like it's probably a... I don't know. Five... Well, no. Hotels are usually more than that. Something that would be considered a resort like this is probably like... 10... 12 floors? Something like that? So, yeah. Yeah, no. This is, uh... This is, this is extreme. I don't know how they manage this. <laughs> and the rest smashed through all barricades. See, that part makes more sense. I really hate to do this. But we're, we've got to split up if we're going to warn everybody in time. I don't want to leave you either. But you're right. By the way. That was Jake being genre savvy. Take a drink. Just don't get yourself killed, okay? Hey, apparently I'm not the one we need to worry about. I've died multiple times and come back. Of course, now so have you. So, I won't. You start to go when Jake reaches out and grabs your wrist. One more thing. Oh no. What are you- what are you- what? What is this? What? <sighs> ah. He pulls you into a long, passionate kiss. When he's done, he presses his forehead to yours. <sighs> Be safe. Oh. Shut up! You're gonna make me cry again! I will. Jake kisses you on the forehead, then jogs off down the hall on light feet. You turn to continue your journey, and run straight into a blue figure. Oh god. Now what? This is, this is odd music for running into one of the Watchers, but okay. <gasps> ah! 
cool, so all our stealth to get past the watchers just got ruined because we screamed. Awesome. I apologize for frightening you, Kira. Okay, it's Iris. That's fine. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Yo, you should see your face right now. Uh, you should be seeing yours in a minute when you see what's around the corner, Raj. You fill them in on what's happening. They're here? In the resort? Oh crap. Oh crap. This is an unfortunate development. A pity. I had quite enjoyed my brief time knowing Raj. Wow, Iris just writing us off. She's like, see ya. <laughs> Damn. Give us a little credit, Iris. You make your way to the elevator and press a button, emerging four floors below. Okay, this is the floor for Grace's room. I'll go get her. Meanwhile, Iris, I need you to, we can say, scout the Watcher's positions, or get them to chase you and lead them away. Not sure how effective that would be, I, but, you know, she... She's a little floaty ball that, as far as we know, doesn't make any noise, so she should be a good spy. Go scout the Watcher's positions. Excellent idea. Right away. We have to get everyone together, somewhere safe. What about that security center hidden behind the game room? That'd be safe. Great idea, Grace. Only problem is, some of our classmates' rooms are in the other wing of the tower. Gotta go across the lobby to get over there. But you guys go straight, se straight to security now and tell everybody you find. I'll bring everyone from the other wing and meet you there. Ugh. Don't be foolish, Kira. You, Grace, and I are by far the lives most worth saving here. Wow! Wow! Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay. Fuck you, Alistair! Alistair! We are not leaving anyone behind! Yeah, you're not gonna make points with Grace with that one, buddy boy. Definitely not. Though, I am weirdly flattered that you think I'd be worth saving. Yeah, if he if he dislikes you when, when you reach this choice, the outcome is different. Yep, see, relationship check. Well, you've proven yourself worth the air you breathe, unlike most. Don't let it go to your head. Eh, fuck you. A small group of watchers spots you from across the lobby. They race towards you with superhuman speed. Time to go! <gasps> oh crap! <gasps> Kira! This way! Hey, our BFF in the nick of time. You spot Diego, beckoning to follow him. We are not going to be able to shake these guys, Diego. By the way, Grace was being pretty genre savvy there. Take a drink. Okay. We have to lead them into those traps we set. Well, where did you put them? Okay. Um. So we have run to the shops or run to the nightclub. The... Balloons were on the shopping level, I think, so run to the shops. You and Diego scramble up the stairs to the shopping level, darting by kiosks, convenience stores, and gift shops. Ha! There! You run into a high-fashion boutique and find Alistair's pyramid of paint-filled balloons. Of fucking course they're in a high-fashion boutique, Alistair, my god. <sighs> Hope your aim's good. Yeah, I was kind of hoping Sean would be here for this one, but okay. 
Yeah, see? Sure wish we had Sean for this. Take a drink. The, the, the watchers rumble into the boutique. You grab the balloons and let fly. <laughs> okay, this is gonna end well, I'm sure. Splat! Splat! You peg the watchers in the face, blinding them with thick paint. Points with Diego. Mission accomplished! Keep moving! You take off again, leaving watchers in your dust. But a few avoided your balloons. We've got some stragglers. Any more traps up your sleeve? Okay, where was Michelle's? Right, the oxygen tank. Where'd we set that up? So you have the kitchen to the pool. Okay, well, Grace's idea was the pool, so it must be in the kitchen. Run to the kitchen. You lead Diego to the kitchen, searching for the trap you planted. Ha! That's it! Set up in the far- or at the far end of the kitchen is a chrome pressurized oxygen tank resting horizontally on a serving cart. Oh god, this is not how this works. Oh, okay. This is gonna be good. What the hell are we supposed to do with this? Behind you, the watchers storm into the kitchen. Ganna shan le zi! Dima nishala! I am really, really fascinated by the fact that these people never repeat a word. Except for when the, uh, the leader was repeating to us several times to surrender. This is not how languages work. I also don't see any recognizable syntax, so interesting. We've got incoming! <laughs> no, they've got incoming. Oh god. You grab a meat tenderizing hammer resting beside the tank and slam it down on the valve at the back. That is not heavy enough. You need, like, a multi-pound sledge. Like, one of the long-handled ones, not one of the short ones. It snaps off, releasing the built-up pressure in a smoky plume. The tank rockets off the cart like a missile. It wouldn't be smoky. Okay. I hold. and crashes into them with spectacular force. Ha-ha! Bullseye! That ought to buy us some time. Come on! Back to the lobby! You take off running across the lobby. Up ahead, you see strange reflections on the floor. realize that it's been covered with water. Oh god. Oh god. <gasps> it's Lila's trap! Noticing the pair of thick electrical cables resting in the pooled water, you follow their path over to a hiding spot. Where Lila is about to throw an electrical switch. Oh god, is she gonna try to murder us? Nope, oh, maybe not. Kira! Diego! Hurry! You sprint across the flooded section of the lobby. The watchers chase you through it, their bare feet splashing. And just as you make it out... <sighs> I hope this doesn't come as a shock! <laughs> oh my god, this is terrifying! She throws the switch. Electricity crackles through the conductive water, zapping all of the watchers, and killing the breaker, and possibly killing them. Kira, I completed your assignment. Downloading scouting report.
Numbers and blueprints appear on the room's monitors. Ha <laughs> ha, nice work. This ought to help us find a way out of here. Pounding on the sealed doorway silences your group. You can hear several voices shouting in the Watcher's language. Uh, will it help us figure out a way past that? They're right outside. What are we supposed to do? We're safe for now, but we're completely cornered in here. There's only one thing we can do. Now that we're all together, we regroup and fight our way out. Whoa, hey, whoa, what? No. Oh, God. I mean, you don't really have any other option, do you? There's, as far as we know, not supplies in here. Um, and they can just keep replenishing their people and keep guard on the door until we starve to death. Which seems like not what they want. They don't seem to want to kill us, but that's what can happen, so shit. It's simple. Right now, we can say we have a choice or we have no choice. <sighs> I mean, our if we say we have a choice, our choice is to stay here and starve. So, it's really not a choice. We have no choice. Sorry. Sorry, Michelle. I'm sorry, what? No. There's always a choice. I mean, I would agree, but... Mm, not always. Sometimes fate has plans for us. And it seems like it has plans for each of us today. I don't personally buy this, but okay. Whatever happens... I'm ready. I'm glad you are. Cheers to that. I'm ready too. I was born ready. Yeah, we know, Lila. You're like killing people. Alright. I'm opening the door on three. When I do, everyone, full speed ahead. Keep pushing forward. We can cut through the ballroom! Your group scatters into the ballroom, only to find yourselves face to face with... A dozen muscular watchers, led by the unmasked one who swung into your bedroom. I like how he, like, hasn't retrieved another mask at all from anybody. Nobody carries any backups, I guess. I don't know. Surround them. Fan out. The Watchers act on command, spreading out and flanking your group. Stay close, people. Watch each other's backs. <gasps> Kira, get down! You turn in time to see something launching at you. Michelle tries to tackle you out of the way, but you're both caught beneath it. A large rope net woven from tough vines. Well, shit. Ugh! This is what I get for trying to help you. I mean, I think you were gonna be caught in it anyway, but go off, I guess. Hold still. I can get us out of here. Wriggling around, limbs tangled with Michelle, you're able to turn the cutlass against the vines. Oh my god, if you cut my hair, you are dead. Uh, sure, that's the most important thing right now. Just a little further. The sharp cutlass blade easily slices through the vines, freeing you both. Whew! Good thing I was there to save your ass. Sure, Michelle. Okay. This is a weird change of heart, but whatever. Just then, a black, round-tipped arrow grazes Michelle's arm. Ooh, shit. Sorry, honey. Ow! What the hell? I can't move my arm! The arrows must be tipped with some sort of non-lethal paralytic so they can capture us. Look out! 
You run to Diego and get between him and the Watcher. No! Why do you fight your destiny? Because my destiny is, like, hurting and killing my friends. So, yeah. Because I decide what it'll be. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, very, like, Marvel Comics movie there. I love it. Sean, Craig, Jake, and Estella try to lead the group forward, but they're beaten back. It's no use. These guys are crazy strong. The Watchers let their, let their round-tipped arrows fly. Quinn and Michelle collapse as the paralyzing arrows plunk them square in the chest and bounce off. Oh, so they don't actually, like, pierce, they just touch. Okay, that's marginally less upsetting. <laughs> I can't move. <sighs> Me neither. We won't hold out much longer. We've got to do something. Ah, to hell with this. Jake reaches into the back of his waistband and reveals that futuristic weapon that we found in the observatory. Which just tells us the sleek looking gun you found in the observatory. Jake, I thought you said we shouldn't play with that. We have no idea what it does. Well, friends, I guess it's time to find out. Jake pulls the trigger. In a flash, a person-sized bubble escapes or erupts from the tip of the gun and launches across the room. As it whips past, you can see an entire world refracting through it. What the? The Watchers panic and freeze. Two of them are caught inside the bubble and instantly vanish. Hmm. Okay. Yeet! Okay. The bubble pops with blinding light. Nobody in the room moves, all stunned by what they witnessed. Holy! The Watchers take advantage of Jake's momentary freeze. They lunge toward him. But he's too quick. He aims at more Watchers and fires again. What's the ammo on this thing? Another flash. Another human-sized bubble races across the room, catching two more Watchers. The unmasked one, the one who repelled into your room, just barely dives out of the way in time. He does not look particularly pleased, I'm gonna be honest. The others scatter for cover. Everybody go now! We've cleared a path! Help Quinn and Michelle! Craig scoops up Michelle in his arms, while Jake and Sean help Quinn up. Together, you barely make it out of the ballroom, blocking the doors behind you. For a second there, I thought I saw another world through the bubble. It looked a lot like here, but not quite. I didn't see any people, so it wasn't a mirror. It's like it was shooting some kind of portal. Scanning. My information is dated, but I have some prototype schematics for a similar weapon. It is designated a tachyon accelerator. Its objective is to move physical objects forward in time. So, we were sending those Watchers into the future? 
Okay, so it's a time travel gun. Sure. Why the hell not? Just then, Alistair spins around, panicked. Grace? Grace! Have any of you seen her? <gasps> we lost Raj, too! Uh-oh. Damn it, we have to find them! So who do you rescue? We can rescue Raj for 20 diamonds. We can rescue Grace for 20 diamonds. Or we can abandon them both. Um... I feel horrible. I feel like Raj can take care of himself. But I, I can't leave Grace. I can't. Let's go get her. We can't let Grace be taken. Oh, thank heavens. Ah, we are not there yet. Alistair grabs your face and kisses you hard on the forehead. Dude, personal space violation. So I think Jake's probably going to, like, kill you. Well, what are you all waiting for? You to explain what the shit you just did. You race up a few flights of stairs to floor 15 and hurry to the lounge. There, a lone watcher drags Grace back toward an open window. He notices your arrival and growls. Alanir Fai Yunika. Sure. Sean steps forward to fight, but Alistair stops him with a hand on his chest. Allow me. Oh, unless you got some secret ninja skills hiding up there, Alistair, this is not gonna end well. Uh, can we go now? But what about Raj? Oh, I see we can go get them both. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's go get them. Let's go get him. We're coming for you, Raj. We've got to get Raj back, no question. We did say earlier we weren't leaving anybody behind, so I'm going to stick to it. We have to hurry. They have him cornered. Moving as fast as you can, your group makes it to the restaurant on the 13th floor. There, Raj is boxed in by three watchers. They try to pin him down. Heshlafant! No! Bad, bad! Hands off! No touchy! Uh, yeah, I don't want him touching me either. What do we do? Take them all at once? I might have a solution. Oh, oh no. Oh, they've pissed off the robot. Oh boy. Iris floats forward. And her hologram distorts, morphing into a monstrous, hideous creature. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god, it's the crab. Okay. <laughs> Because crabs roar. I don't know. As Alistair and Lila drag garden furniture over to prop the elevator open, you join Jake, who's counting off the parachutes. His face falls. Jake? What's wrong? We don't have enough shoots for everyone. Yeah, I figure we probably would have noticed that in the storage locker, but I guess if we were going really fast. What? What does that mean? It means we have to leave some of us behind. 
cool. I don't like this plan. Uh oh. Zara calls out from the edge of the rooftop. Yeah, so they're climbing up the goddamn tower walls. They're gonna be here any minute. Everyone looks around, distraught. No one moves. Finally, Sean lifts up a pack and puts it in your arms. <sighs> you go, Kira. I'll stay back. Whoa, no, 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 no. There's no, like, tandem harnesses or anything here for, like, instructors? Come on. This can't be happening. No. Oh my god, no. Me too. No. Shut up, you idiots. Now's not the time to act all noble. Jake, it's exactly the time. No, we just went through this whole thing of we're not leaving anybody behind and no. God damn it. Fine. Guess I'm staying back too. Hey, no, 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 no. You can't be like taking away all of the people who know how to fight. This is a bad plan. Oh my god. No. No one's getting left behind. A lot of us here have only known each other a short time. But we've been through so much together. We're all we can count on in this crazy place. So we are not going to abandon each other now. Your friends all look at each other, finding strength in one another. All right, peeps. Guess it's ride together or die together. Let's let's less with the dying. If possible, I recommend the former. Well, we're running out of time for a miracle. They're almost here. Indeed. You have approximately 60 seconds to escape. Man, I do not want to go out like this. I just want to close my eyes and wake up when it's all over. Wake up when it's all over? Wait a second! Thinking quickly, you grab... So, our dart- or our options are the tranquilizer dart, the watcher's necklace, the portal gun, your room key, or the strange seashell. Um, yeah, the only thing that makes sense here is the portal gun because we know it goes into the future, so... <laughs> You reach behind Jake and pull the time gun from his waistband. We'll use this. It won't work, Kira. There are too many of them. You can't shoot them all quickly enough. Hey, not with that attitude, I can't. Who said anything about shooting them? Huh? What are you... Oh. Hold on. You're talking about going through a portal ourselves? We've got no idea where it would send us. Or when. Michelle is correct. I have no data suggesting where the portal would lead. Or if you'd even survive. 30 seconds. But Kira's right. It's the only way we all get out of here together. You pull your friends in a tight group hug around you and aim the gun at your own feet. Alright, everybody, here we go. Oh, good. Furball clings to your legs. Yeah, let's not leave Furball behind, please. He's worried. It's okay. Everybody, think positive! Envision your goals! What? 
I'm just gonna say it, okay? I love you guys. Aw, oh, thanks, buddy. <sighs> Screw it! I love you all, too! Ah, Craig finally likes us, okay. No matter what happens, this was one dope-ass vacation, y'all. Oh, please, oh, please, don't let me die in a group hug. That'd be so embarrassing. <laughs> what do you care? You'd be dead! Alistair? I'm scared. Then why did we just get a point with you? I'm here, Grace. Just hold on to me. Hang on a second, princess. Oh, oh god, oh no, is he gonna be dramatic again? Yes, he is. Jake leans in and kisses you one last time. <laughs> Alright. I can die happy now. Okay. Five seconds remaining. Sean looks at you and nods. Do it. Oh, what, we don't get a point with him? What the shit? Hang on, everyone. <laughs> Here's to adventure, huh, Kira? <sighs> Here's to adventure. You squeeze the trigger. The bubble forms around your legs, instantly expanding to swallow all of your friends. But right as it envelops you, a lasso of vines wraps around Diego's torso. No! No, God damn it, no! What? No! <gasps> Diego! Beyond the bubble, you can make out the Watcher's leader now on the rooftop, trying to reel Diego out. And he looks like he's serious about it. As Diego is yanked back, you reach and grab his hands. Diego! Hold on! What's happening? One by one, your friends vanish into the blinding white, winking out of view. Whoa! Holy! Ha! It's only you and Diego left. You hold on tight even as Diego's now pulling you out of the bubble as well. Oh no. Oh no. They're too strong! Diego, just don't let go! They'll just take you with me! Diego, no. Don't do it! Yeah, I, I smell some genre savvy coming up here. Take a drink. He meets your eyes, suspended halfway through the quantum cloud. Goodbye, Kira. He lets go of your hands and vanishes. Take another drink. Okay. Diego! The blinding, cleansing light engulfs you. It feels like it seeps into your very essence, becoming one with you. And then it recedes. You're still standing on the rooftop, exactly where you had stood. Your friends surround you, stunned and unsteady. 
that light. It's gone. So are the Watchers. We made it through the portal. Wait, Kira. Where's Diego? Oh god, don't make me explain this. You tremble, unable to form words. They took him. Pulled him out. Iris's hologram projects out and warmly smiles. Welcome back, old friends. It has been some time since we last spoke. She didn't come through with us? That's interesting. Iris? When exactly did you last see us? Scanning records. Last interaction on the Celestial's rooftop. 204 days ago. Wow. Okay. You're telling us we've been gone for over six months? That is correct. So we left Diego in the hands of those people for that whole time? Cool. Not necessarily. It is possible they killed him immediately. You d- Oh my god, you're not helping, Iris. A silence falls over your group. You all look out into the darkness of the forest, wondering if he's out there somewhere. If he's still alive. Diego... Act 3 complete. 10 of 10 clues found. Congratulations! You found every clue in Act 3 and unlocked the full bonus scene. 204 days ago. Dawn is breaking as Diego trudges through the rainforest, his hands bound tight with vines. Well, looks like I'm heading to the belly of the beast. Several watchers armed with amber blades escort him on the journey. In silence, apparently. Both of them. No way I can outrun these guys. They mean business. Diego's foot catches on a tree root, and he trips forward, skinning his knee on a rock. <sighs> yeah, and then it's really hard to get up if your hands are behind your back, so... A blue hand gently extends before him. Diego looks up. The unmasked leader, his golden eyes somehow kind, offers help up. Diego hesitates then takes it. Thanks. Tun Domini. Whatever that means. As the group resumes its march, Diego scans his surroundings. I mean, like, they were pretty determined to capture us alive, so it doesn't seem like they really intend to kill any of us, but still, I don't, I'm not sure I would call my kidnapper kind. My only choice is to make a run for it. We're coming up on a ridge close by. Maybe if I can beat them to it, I can slide down before they catch me. He swallows hard. This is crazy, but it's my only shot. And it's probably the plan Kira would come up with, so... Diego takes a deep breath and bolts. Earlier that night, Lila hurries through the halls on the 15th floor of the Celestial, looking over her shoulder. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Behind her, a watcher gives chase, wielding a sharp spear of amber. 
Fanuka. Lila races into an open room to hide, but the Watcher follows her in. Oh no! The Watcher corners her against the large window, 15 stories up. Ka Lutani. Lila cowers, trembling. <laughs> Lowering the spear, the Watcher closes in with a length of vine to tie her up. As he draws near... Lila unleashes a vicious flurry of fists, each strike expertly targeted and brutally delivered. <coughs> Lila's punches pulverize his trachea, his orbital bone, his ribs. He drops the spear. Lila grabs it and circles around, now cornering the watcher by the window. The enemy heaves, wounded. Now then! Lila blows her hair out of her face and stares down her prey. Where is Everett? What have you done with him? The Watcher looks at her through the mask, his eyes soft and lost. Everett! Where is he? Rourke! Tell me, Rourke, you understand? Lila's voice cracks from sobs. The Watcher just looks at her, confused. Act 3, Epilogue. Everyone splits up. You and Estella notice Alistair and Iris reading something intently by the concierge desk. What have they got over there? Hey guys, what you reading? We seem to have found a note left behind by unknown persons. It wasn't here before, was it? He hands a scrap of notebook paper to you. So, kind of scribbled all across this thing, says 12 letters equals Hadean Zodiac. The runes are the key. Lupus with L circled. And month by month by month by month. Hmm. What on earth? Who wrote this? We've been gone for six months. Anybody could have come in here. I did not detect any entry to this to the resort after the intruders abandoned their search. What do all the scribbles mean? I I believe it's the notes of someone who was trying to solve the password on my father's office computer. That's oddly specific. That password was 12 letters long. The note refers to 12 letters as well. Thanks, computer. We got that part. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's use these notes and try to get into Rourke's computer. Rourke's office overlooks a spectacular view of the island and ocean. At the glass desk, his holographic monitor glows softly. Let me try it, try it again. I'm going to give it a shot. I wonder if it's going to like make me look at something again before I do it, but okay. A L C C A A L C C A D D S C C U P Okay, I must have typoed. The computer chimes. 
We're in! Oh my god, you did it! Finally! What was the password? So we can show everybody this password. Oh, oh, I see. It spells out all adds up. Gotcha. Kind of. Wait, what? I can only find one file. <laughs> You're joking. Damn it. The bastard must have wiped the drive. There's nothing here but a single program. Awaken.execute. Oh, that sounds scary. Awaken what? I say we find out. Uh, you what now? Oh my god, it's not gonna give me a choice. We're gonna do it. C slash user slash admin awaken dot or slash awaken dot execute. All right, here we go. You start the program. Almost immediately, you hear a soft hiss of steam. Within a hollow marble shell, the column holds a glass tank filled with an eerie green fluid and a man floating inside, asleep. Instantly, you recognize his face from the portrait in the lobby. Father! Dun dun dun! To be continued. That is the perfect place to stop, so I will start book two next Friday to continue Endless Friday. So same time, same place, twitch.tv slash aromanticace at 7 p.m. Pacific if you want to watch me live. Um, I will also be back on Monday with more Perfect Match Monday. So we're, we're, we're pulling up close to the end in that book as well. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to play book two or if I'm going to just play a completely different book. Um, but we'll find out a week from Monday. But until then, everyone enjoy whatever it is you do between Friday and Monday. Catch you later.